Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome to today's Interstage Window, my Saturday stream, which is a stream with my friends that I have here today with me, Landon. Say hi, Landon. Oh no, Zoom cuts you out. Speak oh. again. Hi, Landon. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Zoom decided to freeze right when you were saying hi, so we got like this really lovely freeze frame like this. <laughs> This is how it's going to be the whole time. <laughs> it's good now. It's good now, though. Um, but Landon, oh my gosh, what are we talking about today? We're talking about my absolute favorite thing from my childhood. Uh, the best thing ever. The best Disney princess, if you want to consider her that. And that's The Little Mermaid. Oh my gosh. And also, just very exciting, we are going, we're streaming on both Twitch and and YouTube. So first stream that we're doing that on. Um, so just to kind of let you guys know how that's going to go, the chat that's appearing on the screen is still Twitch chat. Like that's still how that is. Um, YouTube chat will not be appearing on stream, but but I can still see everything that you're saying. So it's not private or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we're going to be streaming on both. Um, you know, that's basically as to my understanding, basically allowed now. It's not something that Twitch is going to, um, you know, put the kibosh on. So if, if they do and I have to move over to YouTube because Twitch banned me, I'll know what happened. But my understanding is it's okay to do that now. So we're going to do that. So yeah. <laughs> so welcome it's... in. Yes, we're going to be talking about the Little Mermaid. Okay, let me show everybody this beautiful, beautiful PowerPoint that you made land in here. I we was go. so, so proud of this. I was like, the fact that I found this thing and it was this, I was like, yes. It's so everything beautiful. we needed. It's so it's like somebody, it's like somebody made it specifically for us. They were like, Yes, I know that at some point Karen and Landon are gonna talk about the Little Mermaid, and this is the PowerPoint for them. So yes. thank you. Um probably random, probably other teacher who posted this to the internet, because that's honestly that's probably who posted it. It's another teacher. Yeah. Right? Well, it's <laughs> yeah, or an art. I mean, I think that there's like graphic designers that like whole job is to just design PowerPoints, which like that's fucking dope if it is yeah. your job that's a yeah. good job to have instructional designer <laughs> that's the job title you want to look for if you want to be a professional powerpoint designer that's my job title i do i actually do a lot do do a lot of that <laughs> instructional designer yep so yeah little mermaid oh my gosh okay so um do you want to just get into it i kind of just want to yeah, get into it because we because we're going to do talk about it because we're going to be talking about the original fairy tale okay yeah. the um the 80s animated movie and the 2023 remake. Okay, all three. We're going to be talking about all three. We got time and we have some spicy takes. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> let's just get started. Yes. And let's get started in the way that we always get started with like, Karen, what's your favorite thing about Little Mermaid? And uh, a caveat, we're talking about the 2023 Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. So we decided for the favorite things section, we wanted it to be about the newest movie, since I know that's what people want to hear about. So we our favorite things are exclusively from the newest movie. Okay. Um, so my favorite thing is Eric. Okay, so I gotta tell you guys, if you have seen the new movie, which we are going to talk about um, in more detail later on, but you will know that Eric actually has a song. In the he sings in the movie, so he has a personality. He, oh my, <laughs> what? Okay, so at first we have the first Eric song, and I realize, oh, he has a personality now. I hate this. That's what I thought. By the end of the movie, I was charmed. Okay, I was Team Eric. I was like, I see it. I ship it. I'm for it. Okay, and it took he he won me over. He won me over. Wow. The, the prince that's designed to have every single girl love him won you over. Amazing. He did. Fantastic. He did. He did. It was very nice to see Eric with a personality that was. wasn't just like dumb boy was well, rescued. You know, so in the first, in the original animated movie, Eric doesn't have much of a personality. And the reason for that is because the whole point is that Ariel wants a new lifestyle. She just happens to be a teenager and he happens to be hot. You know, the fact that um, it, like who he actually is as a person is kind of irrelevant to the point of the original animated movie. So Eric don't have no personality. He ate nothing and there's nothing. And so when they gave him one, I was like, oh no, they're going to change the point. Point. And well, we'll talk about that later, um, about what exactly happened there. But I, I don't dislike this change. I'm actually a fan of it. I think it was a good change. No, I think it was great and fantastic. And just a 
side that I had while you were thinking. Uh, it's very interesting that like Disney, we grew up in the time of the Disney Rene- Disney Renaissance, mm. where it wasn't like the, our characters, our main characters were pants, but our boys were pants. The boys all were all the princes mm-hmm. didn't matter because you could inject any personality you wanted into them. Yep. It was just about like, oh, cool, I can relate to this character. And now as we've gone to the 2000s, the 2010s, and now the 2020, 2020s, it's interesting that our main characters are now pants for most of our stuff. Everyone's our Rapunzel now. Others. Everyone's First Rapunzel all, now. Get away from my girl Rapunzel. I, I love, love Rapunzel, Rapunzel, but everyone, Stop. why is everyone after Rapunzel, Rapunzel? Anyway, that's a whole other side tangent. Yes. <laughs> that's a whole other side tangent. But you're so right, because if you think about the Disney Renaissance movies, the boys that really shine in those Renaissance movies are the ones where they are the main character, right? It's like we've got Aladdin right yeah and we've got yeah. um hercules right and then with beauty and the beast the beast actually has a personality but he's a part of the title right but if you yeah. think about like the pure uh, like a little mermaid a pure princess movie eric doesn't have no personality and i have a genuine question for you mm. other than angry what is the beast's personality other than angry I mean, well, we have not done a ver. We didn't do a versus on Beauty and the Beast, so we did not if, do a versus if, on if, Beauty and the Beast. If you are interested in hearing my opinions about Beast's original personality versus his remake personality and, and the fairy tale and all of that, like, let us know because I'm not opposed to doing a Beauty and the Beast versus Beauty and the Beast episode. Love um, a good Disney, and we can yes. throw in the French fairy tale in there too if we want. Yeah, we and- can talk about it how it is one of the most popular, in my opinion, remakes as far mm-hmm. as like uh, reimaginings of yep. Beauty and the Beast as a reimagining as tales told as time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I would say it's the, probably the most popular as well. Not the best one. If you're interested in our opinions on what the best ones are, go check out our ranking video. We have that where we actually watched all of the the live action remakes up to the point that we filmed that and um, yes. and ranked them, which we thought were actually the best and worst. So yeah, that's my favorite thing. Eric, he and it, it was because he won me over, not because I actually think he was the best part of the movie, but it's because I started out going like, I hate this change. And by the end, I was like, I disagree with my previous self. I like this change. So that's my favorite thing. Landon, what was your favorite thing in the remake? Yes. Okay. So I, this is, has some controversy because I know it wasn't very popular amongst most people. But man, the cinematography and the underwater landscapes were gorgeous, were fantastic. Uh, I am a, I'm an avid scuba diver. I love to be underwater. I love to scuba dive. And man, this movie made me feel like I was scuba diving. It was so good. Uh, and it was so pretty. And I think that there was so much art involved in creating these underwater landscapes i loved it Mm, you know what my favorite part of this was was the designs of the mermaid's tails the mermaid's tails were fucking gorgeous it was the Mm -hmm. prettiest thing i'd ever seen every single one of them was a masterpiece like in the scene at the end with all the all the mermaids you know saying goodbye to ariel oh my god just breathtaking design after breathtaking design so good i i don't think they would be helpful to act for swimming because they're so like Lucy, <laughs> but uh-huh. <laughs> but they're so I, pretty. Uh, yes. I also loved the coral reefs, and then I also I know it was dark. I watched it in the dark, so I didn't get com- I didn't I wasn't complaining. It was too dark about I the fact that, that it was dark. Yeah, I didn't I didn't complain because I had no lights on, uh, so it wasn't too dark for me. It was perfect. Uh, but also uh, in Ursula's cavern, all oh, of like the what's luminescence bioluminescence things that were going on Mm -hmm. beautiful wonderful loved it ursula's cavern was gorgeous the only part of this that i disagree with is when they actually show like the castle and the rooms in the castle to me it looked too much like a real reef and real underwater scenery it didn't look like a fantasy mermaid castle to me and it was very jarring for me to look at that next to these beautiful fantasy obviously not realistic mermaid tales so that part i disliked but everything else in regards to the scenery i thought was really good yeah i think that they if they had the fake not helpful for swimming mermaid tales they can have a fake castle yeah if they had real life more like shark 
or whale yeah. tails. Uh, then they, then the kelp, the kelp and coral castles make sense. Yeah. But choose a lane, you know? Really? Yeah. Are we going fantasy or realism? Come on, guys. Right. And I feel like they, that the, the, what we were, what was supposed to happen is that the mermaids were a fantasy element of this realistic underwater setting. And unfortunately, because the castle design was what it was, it ended up kind of a confusing mess a little bit, you know, any shots about the castle in them were weird. It was very pretty and I liked it. Mm -hmm. It was very pretty. Like the scenes that are just purely the reef, gorgeous. The scenes inside of Ursula's cave, gorgeous. Like I completely agree there. Like to the cinematography's point, there was like this first. The first shot is like the waves coming over, mm-hmm. and I was just like, "This is too pretty for a Disney movie. This is wasted on children." Uh, I'm happy about it, but nobody's gonna want to watch this. Well, uh, I do. And I, I do feel it. like I do feel like Little Mermaid kind of suffered from the same thing that The Lion King did. Did is that parts of it are a fancy tech demo more than anything else and i think some of the scenery um suffers from that just a little bit which makes the shots very very beautiful but when you put them inside of their context the the meaning is a little bit confusing yes we're we're gonna get more into that Mm -hmm. and have a fun little discussion yes about that (laughs) okay but before we actually get into any of our analysis we have to address the um unfortunately racist element uh elephant in the room we are talking the whale shark the whale shark we We gotta talk about the whale shark shark in the room room. okay (laughs) okay the first whale shark in the room um hallie bale that's her name right i always want to call her hallie Hallie bailey Bailey. hallie hallie bailey okay um hallie bailey she's amazing you guys Okay, she's the best part of the movie. Um, so God. I was watching this, right? Like, I, my husband knew I was watching, a, like, all the Little Mermaid content, as much Little Mermaid content as I could for this. So he asked me, like, did you watch the new movie yet? And I said, yes. And he's like, you know, what did you think about um, Halle, Halle, Halle Bailey? And I was like, oh, she was the only truly good, good part of the movie. Like, honestly, like, if you think about the movie as a whole, she is the one giving the, like, A plus top tier performance. Beautiful, gorgeous, everything about her. I loved her singing performance. Oh my God, so good. Oh my God. So good. She's Ariel. She's Ariel. She is Ariel. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the fact that this was, and I know, I know it was overblown and over-exaggerated specifically by racists who ha- were uncomfortable with the fact that colorblind casting exists and that Halle Bailey was truly remarkable and the best person for the job. She really uh, was. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's like true of everyone in the movie. We'll get into that. But, um, yes. but for her performance, she was amazing. Like she was great. I, Cause I watched it back to back. Like I watched the original and then I watched this one like back to back. So I could really compare. And what was so good about her performance is she was clearly Ariel in spirit, like her voice, her mm-hmm. facial expressions, her mannerisms, her movements, but it was not identical to the cartoon because that's another thing about remakes that if y'all have watched some of our episodes of these kinds of things before that is my pet peeve shot for shot remakes i think are dumb like why if you're gonna remake it you better do something new that's actually interesting that's not that like evokes the original but doesn't copy the original and that is exactly what her performance is it is a hundred percent aerial but it is not the original performance yeah, no, it's it's it it has the essence of Ariel. Mm-hmm. She got she got the job. She did the job exactly how she was supposed to do it, and she was fantastic for it. Uh, and the fact that everybody made such a big deal and this blew up as much as it was is ridiculous and just comes down to racism. Yeah, because if you um, watch the movie with any kind of like brain cells in your head, I mean, even if you hated everything else about it, like she's still good so yeah it's she's so good yeah so, so i good. hope for a long and wonderful career for her because mm-hmm, i want to see her in other things and i think that if she embraced ariel and the spirit and essence of ariel this well i'm excited to see what she's going to embrace next me too there was one other thing though landon what was it changes don't matter like there was a whole, like, especially change lines. There's a couple mm-hmm. change lines in songs. There's a couple change lines in dialogue. And Disney fans, 
threatened to throw themselves off of buildings it felt like with how oh this changes everything it's yeah. so terrible it doesn't matter yeah it doesn't I barely matter even noticed so as far as the change the changed lines specifically in the songs i did not notice so they cut the they cut the body language line from ursula's song and the only reason uh, yeah it's sad the only reason it's i sad. even noticed be is because i love the animation that she does in the original with the body language and she's like you know like that um so that line is cut and i did notice it but i'll tell you it did not hurt the song the song was still good no. um and then the kiss the girl had some change lines Which you know probably a good thing honestly <laughs> watching it back to back i had to go google what the line changes were because i could not remember the the lyrical part of that song sounded basically the same to me yeah it just it doesn't affect the movie as a whole and like it, it stands to that point to the the like the purpose i think that where and we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth, but where Little Mermaid was better than Lion King was the fact that it didn't go for a shot by shot remake. And the songs too, if you listen to the original Kiss the Girl, there are some song, some song lyrics that probably should have changed. They just it's aren't appropriate for 2023. Truly about, don't, just... ask, don't ask for her, it doesn't have <laughs> consent when kissing her, is basically that song. And so changing some of the more obscure lines from that is, is better. And it didn't yeah. change the entire song. It didn't change the flow. <sighs> the meaning of this that song was still the same. It's just yes. that it was in a 2023 context. So when you when you listen to that song in like a 1980s context, and then the 20 the new song in the 2023 context, they're the same. They mean the same thing. It's just different cultural context. It's like how you know every time Christmas comes around, someone wants to make a think piece about how um the you know baby it's cold outside is like a really um non-consensual song it's not y'all are taking it out of context and trying to make it modern so but because this is a remake for little mermaid they had to modernize the lines a little bit so that it would mean the same thing to a 2023 audience and i and i think that's basically what they did so yeah, this yeah, stuff doesn't yeah. matter. Everybody that made think pieces before the movie even came out or like right after the movie came out complaining about this stuff, like just know, like they're just wrong. We just think they're wrong, just period. That's not the things to complain about in regards to this movie. Don't worry, we have some complaints. Just these are not them. <laughs> Karen has some complaints. We should be I have clear. some serious complaints, but We're not gonna about get to this. that. But not Don't this. worry. <laughs> We're going to get to this. All right. But, but in order do, to really, yeah, in yeah. order to really understand and to make this an analysis and to talk about not just Disney, a Renaissance versus Disney remake, because that's old. I think we really need to take into context where the story came from. Because mm. unlike other Disney movies of that era, uh, this wasn't a German or uh, this wasn't a German fairy tale by the Grimm brothers. This was something else. This was a beautiful short story written by Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah. Um, and so I think if you had just a quick little summary of the short story, uh, yeah. you'll hear that it sounds extremely similar. Yep. Uh, basically, there's a little mermaid who lives deep down at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, she has six, there are six sisters. All of them are princesses. And the youngest is quiet and thoughtful uh, and likes to explore a little bit more. And upon uh, a salvage from a shipwreck, she finds a statue of a very beautiful boy whom she becomes slightly obsessed with. Uh, the, unlike the, uh, Disney version, however, uh, the sisters are all very close. They are all very loving to one another, and they look after their grandmother, who uh, tells them that when a mermaid reaches the age of 15, she can rise to the surface, to the water, and explore the world above. Uh, each of them turn 15, they go to the surface, they come back down with what they had seen, and the little mermaid gets very, very excited. And uh, when it is her time, time, she goes up, notices a ship which contains royalty. Uh, the birthday, they're celebrating a birthday of a handsome prince who the mermaid is instantly attracted to, but then a storm comes and sinks the ship. And the little mermaid is delighted when she sees that this prince is sinking beneath water, uh, but then remembers humans 
can't survive underwater. And so instead <laughs> rescues him. Uh, the mermaid sinks back into the water and the prince is unaware of her existence altogether. Uh, the mermaid asks her grandmother about the humans because she's still curious and a little bit obsessed with this boy. And she learns things like that. They don't live that long and they're really not as great as mer, mer men and mer women. Uh, but they have immortal souls. So they float up to heaven when they die. And unlike merman who don't have souls at all. Uh, the little mermaid says that she would trade her 300 years in order to live with this mer boy or this human uh, and be alive forever. And the grandmother tells her that not to think such things. That's a bad idea. And of course, little mermaid being 15 decides uh, that she loves the handsome prince anyway and and uh goes to a witch the sea witch and asks for a potion uh that she trades her voice for and uh basically what must happen is that she, the uh man the prince must fall in love with her uh and marry her or she will not gain that immortal soul and she'll become sea foam on the water so uh they she goes up and is desperate to marry the prince and gain that soul she readily agrees uh the handsome prince is asking her question when she goes up to the the mortal world the handsome question prince is asking her questions uh she's not able to answer of course uh so he of course takes care of her and and they start a fun little friendship however it's not what she wants it to be and she yearns in silence as the prince uh falls in love with a pretty girl that he believes saved him from uh the sinking ship uh unaware that it was actually the little, little mermaid who had done such a thing um they undertake a voyage to the Narian kingdom because his parents want him to marry the princess of that kingdom uh turns out it's that very girl who the prince thought brought him back to life and so of course they marry um believing the princess uh so of course they marry and the little mermaid realizes uh that she failed to gain his love and so she's going to die the next morning but then the stepsister or the sisters appear uh they've cut off all of their hair to try to help her gain the immortal soul that she is uh that she wants but in order to do so she must kill the prince um and instead of killing the prince she decides to hurl the dagger into the sea, to become sea foam because she could not think to kill the man she loves, even though he uh, is, even though it dooms her because he does not love her. Uh, and basically, she ends up dying, but uh, gains an immortal soul anyway because of the sacrifice of herself and the selfishness of not killing the prince remaining <laughs> obsessed with the prince well, i don't even understand the moral of this story and that's part of what we're going to talk about but basically she becomes sea foam on the wind and on the sea and and enters heaven eventually yeah the uh, ending's a little silly huh so it's a little silly she's so the her, sisters by the way yeah <laughs> i mean all they like, did was cut off their hair like it's gonna grow back it's not like, that big of a deal fine. and you're then fine. I, the ending is a little bit silly in the original. Like, she did this good deed of not killing the prince. Like, that's not doing a good deed. That's abstaining from doing a poor deed. Those are two different things. But somehow it's good enough to get her a, a, an immortal soul. Uh, it doesn't really make... I don't really get it. Um, but for, from what you've heard from Landon's summary, like, there's a lot in there that is quite similar to the Disney. Because for, for if you've never read it and you've just seen, like, people talk about, like, oh, the original story is so different. Disney made a lot of changes. Like, the truth is they really didn't change a lot. It's not. Uh, there, there is rumor that, uh, like, Hans Christian Andersen was inspired by another story that was very similar to this as well. And instead of sea foam, it was, like, a tree uh, that, that was then she, like, grew up. And as a tree and the children of the prince like was playing on her limbs it was very like giving tree meets the little mermaid <laughs> uh so there's th there was stories like this around but Hans Christian Andersen wrote the the story that Disney took and then made into the little mermaid mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so Disney really did two main things. They edited out the tragedy. They made it a happy story, right? Um, and the dynamic between Ariel and Triton largely isn't there. Her family is very supportive of her. They think it's like fine and cool if she wants to go have this alternative human lifestyle with this prince and they want to help her. They just don't care about humans. So they think killing the prince is like fine actually and worth her, their sister getting the lifestyle that she wants. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't this big whole taboo, betray your family sort of thing, choose between the life that you wanted and this life mm -hmm. that the Disney story kind of adopts. But I think that there is a story underneath this story that really there gives is. context <gasps> to understanding, A, why this story is a tragedy, and B, the real understanding and meaning of this story. Mm. Uh Karen, do you have any insight into what that's about? You know, I might. So Hans Christian Andersen's biography is fascinating, you guys. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, the Little Mermaid, the way that this story came about um, for Hans Christian Andersen is he was a, a very, very gay, maybe bisexual, it's unclear man. But basically, he has this friend that he spends his adolescence with. And I'm shortening this, so like, go check out the biography if you want all the details. But basically, he has this friend that he shares his adolescence with, and he is just head over heels in love, like amazing, ridiculous crush on this friend of his. Uh, his friend, um, bless him, oblivious, doesn't know gay exists, just thinks that Hans Christian Andersen is just like a, a really forward sort of person and a really caring sort of person. And so his extra affections are just treated as like, well, this is just how you are and we're just friends. And so eventually they grow up uh, his friend finds a woman that he would like to marry. He tells Hans Christian Andersen, I'm getting married. You know, I would love for you to come to the wedding. I'm so happy. Da, da, da. Hans, very negative reaction. How could you do this to me? What the fuck? I love you. Blah, 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 blah. His friend doesn't understand. He's like, but we've been friends for so long. How could you not be happy for me getting married? Like, you know, this is ridiculous. Da, 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 da. Anyway, Hans fucks off. He's by No, I do not care about you anymore. He writes The Little Mermaid. He sends a copy to this friend that has betrayed him so much. Okay. And um, basically is like, you did this to me uh, and I hate you now. So that is why The Little Mermaid is how it is. Because there are these long passages in the book where the prince goes on and on about how much he trusts Ariel and how much he cares for Ariel and what good friends they are. <laughs> and it's like goes for pages and pages and pages oh. about the prince saying like, I love how loyal and trusting you are. You're the best. Oh my God. Um, but it's just, we're just besties. We're just friends. No romance. So anyway, yeah. that's why the book is kind of weird. <laughs> we're friends. We're just friends. Yeah. Uh, I'm in love with you completely. And you've friends. left me for another person. And because of that, I am going to turn into sea foam and never be happy again and never rise into the immortal world in which that I gave up my entire life for you. But, you know, we're just friends. <laughs> and I'm not sad at all. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't be guilty. And you know what? You should be grateful that I didn't stab you, actually. I could have killed you. I could have ruined this whole thing. <laughs> hey, I could have ruined this whole thing for you, and I didn't. Go me. Yes. <laughs> I genuinely... So this is what I told Karen before I found this out. I was like, this just sounds like... I'm like, I wonder if Hans Christian Andersen just wanted to write a story about a pretty mermaid and a tra and a tragedy story and then was like fuck it's a fairy tale we gotta make it a fable we gotta make a lesson at the end there has to be some moral thing and he was just like let's do immortal souls because it feels like so just spaghetti at the backslash it feels so random turns out just a sad love story and i was like oh landon have i got a story for you you're gonna love this <laughs> I do love petty. I do love tr drama and I do mm -hmm. love queer mess. And mm -hmm. that's what this is. Uh, which is no surprise because if you look at The Little Mermaid and spoilers for what we're going to talk about here in a second, it's kind of queer. 
Oh my god. Yes. Okay. So the the gayness of the original, guess what? The original the animated Disney animated is pretty gay. It's pretty gay too. So so pretty yeah. Gay. Yep. Um, <laughs> the the big difference is the tragedy. So we've got this lesson here that's like, you know, basically, if you want a certain kind of lifestyle, you should go for it. But like, you know, maybe if uh, if someone betrays you and they don't like reciprocate your needs, don't kill them, actually. That's bad. Um, that's basically yeah. what's happening in the original story. That's like the, the children's well lesson. It's just very interesting because, like, in this story, Ariel is, she accepts the fact that Eric is going to go and get married. The yes. prince is going to go marry another person. Uh, and, but, like, is obviously angry and hurt about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then at the same time has no regard for the fact that her sisters made sacrifices for her. And, like, there's, like, a cognitive dissonance of being, like, oh, I'm hurt by another person's actions. Because that feels like that could be the lesson of being, like, hey, just also be aware. Follow your dreams. Do the thing you want. But just know that your actions could hurt somebody else. Mm -hmm. But, like, that realization never happens for the Little Mermaid. She yeah, never she's... gets there. So that's not a lesson. Even nope. though it kind of is supposed to be, maybe. <laughs> well, she never talks. She never really, like tells her sisters I'm so sorry for leaving you I shouldn't have done this you know it didn't it didn't work out and this you know maybe I should have thought a little bit more about wanting this lifestyle like that never happens just throwing away the dagger like the yeah. like I know it was just hair that the sisters but like obviously in the time of Hans Christian Andersen a woman's hair was a significance for their status for their wealth for everything and they so all had to give it up to get this dad yes, all six of them your your womanhood was your hair so the idea of them like stripping themselves of their womanhood for her to possibly live this happiness and then for her to literally just be like mm -hmm. <laughs> and not care that like her they made sacrifices that she is now impacting them on the same way that the prince impacted her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh it's just a very interesting domino yeah. of like but like that's never that's never tied together so that's just like me as an english major reading this and being like okay hans <laughs> did you read <laughs> what you wrote did you yes. get it so we know the internet loves a good disaster by and basically yes. that's if you read his um his biography that's the vibes that you get is the same kind of like tumblr posts about disaster buys that's what that's what it is um but th yeah the important thing is is that in this story it is all tragedy mm -hmm. and then disney decided to take that yeah. and walk away Yep. So they had to give us a different conflict. So that's why Triton gets such a serious personality change and upgrade in the story in the Disney version, which that takes us to let's talk about the original. Okay, so we're going to give a summary of this one as well, but not like a not like a full summary, right? Just like the main changes. Yeah. Basically, yeah, I think that okay. the biggest thing that we have to really recognize is the fact that there are a couple of large changes. A, Ursula's sisters are pretty much at least at least in the first film unnamed oh ariel sisters <laughs> they at least they get names serial yes they all they get names in this in the remake but no they get names unnamed. in this no the opening song oh, you're right give, the opening they song. give them all the names yeah but they don't really yes. have personalities other than no they are good girls and ariel's a bad girl yes uh so ariel is ostracized from her family rather than it being a loving close-knit family uh that all takes care of one another and is helping like raise and helping like with taking care of their grandmother she's ostracized mm -hmm. uh she's had an obsession of the upper world for years and often sneaks away to go up to the surface to talk to scuttle who is a fun little seagull and to spy on things that are happening up there um, and she has collected things that have fallen off of boats or have been taken away by the tide. In the book, um, all the girls collect stuff that falls into yes. the ocean, by the way. That's not it, a unique just, to Ariel thing. No, uh, but she has like a treasure trove hoard 
of secret it's like that it's it's that same teenage thing of like oh i have a box under my bed that my parents yeah. can never know about this is what that is except it's a whole ass cave uh and of course we have triton triton is the ever expectant father uh who is tough on his daughter we have no clue whatever happened to her mother uh there is no insight into it in the original uh however in the remake we find out that she was killed by hunters uh Whoop -de -doop. <laughs> and uh so that's the big difference and Triton is expected he has standards and he has a way that he is expecting his daughters to live in the lifestyle that he expects his daughters to live and Ariel continues to fail that and on, instead of like I don't know talking to his daughter like a human being or lovingly he just terrifies her mm -hmm. uh and destroys all of her things when she he discovers that he is she has been hiding this huge secret uh which then of course uh sets her up to be uh manipulated by the sea witch rather than her going to the sea witch the it is very clear that ursula is manipulating things behind the scenes mm -hmm. for a rise in status in the kingdom mm -hmm. uh, that does not exist in the no, original in the book all. in the book she just goes willingly to the sea witch there yeah. is no manipulation element everybody knows that the sea witch is there she's just she's just a regular old citizen of the community and yeah. anyone can go to her with their problems if they want to but um, the but disney version is not like that no, especially, I mean, if we want to talk about story, Hans Christian Andersen's, like, story is all about, like, uh, character versus, like, a self-growth thing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Whereas uh, Disney, especially in the Renaissance age, did not want a character versus self-story. There needed to be a villain. There needed to be a conflict that involved a bad guy and a villain. And <coughs> Ursula was obviously the easy choice. Mm -hmm. And so Ursula manipulates her uh takes her, you know makes her sign a contract takes her voice sends her to the surface three days or else your you belong your soul belongs to me uh so instead of her soul rising to a higher place to live happiness uh it is all about marrying this boy or else i own you sort of thing mm -hmm. um and then uh, all the same things happen where eric meets her takes pity on her they form a friendship all blah 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 blah, blah. Except unlike the Hans Christian Andersen version, where he is in love with a princess from another kingdom or someone that he thinks saved her, uh, it turns out that that's Ursula in disguise. That is the sea witch in disguise, not a separate person. Again, manipulating things from behind the scene in order to turn the tides against Ariel, uh, being that fun little villain. And then, of course, the big difference at the end, Ursula is stopped. Ariel gets her voice back. Her and Eric fall in love. They get married and Triton approves of the marriage and understands mm -hmm. that his daughter just wants to live a different lifestyle than what he wanted her to live and accepts her for who she is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So those are the yeah. major changes. Otherwise, a lot of the stuff is the same as yeah. the as the book. It, like, it, like thematically, like moral wise, it's not the same, but like all, like a lot of the visual elements that are in the movie, they came from the book. Like when she's coming, when she's going through the cave to visit the sea witch and there's all like little creature thingies grabbing her like that's in the book you know so it's it's it, from based on what you hear on youtube you're gonna think that the book is way super different than also, it actually is it's not that different than the disney movie no and i also just want to make this correction it's not a whole book it is a hun it's an hour yeah it's like 150 pages which is like not to not it's a it's still a read it's still an mm -hmm. afternoon but like if you're like oh man i don't want to read a whole ass book that's just sad you, you put it on background in the youtube for an hour like it's it's yeah. not that long no like the audiobook uh, version of it is literally an hour it's an very hour. short um so yes just just as a clarification too uh for that but yeah. yeah, no, it's a, it's, it's very similar, Th though the thing is, is like, the moral is the ending, the moral is the goal. Uh, originally, Little Mermaid's goal was to have an internal soul and also marry the prince, mm -hmm. or marry, yeah, and also marry the prince. <clears throat> uh, for Ariel, it's <laughs> that she just wants to marry the prince. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen can disagree a little bit on that. But I think that there's also this like wanting and, and fascination with humans. But it, there is at the end of the day like not that immortal soul sort of thing it is yeah no the, the soul's not there like ariel's whole want that she sings about in part of your world is literally just saying like yes. she wants to live with the humans like she wants to have a human lifestyle 
and she wants to learn more about them and uh, and that's really her goal in the um in the movie in the book of it's not it's have a soul um have you know <laughs> have a soul and also marry a prince yeah uh, but it is in this one it is definitely like oh that boy is handsome and also mm-hmm. humans are great and i want to live there yeah because uh, he's like the first hot human that she sees and so she's like hell yeah hell yeah um so let's talk about some things about this okay uh, we love this movie we love it. It is a freaking masterpiece. Mm-hmm. There's a uh, reason it kicked off the Disney renaissance. Like this being considered the yeah. first renaissance. Like there's a reason. Like all of a sudden, Disney was making good shit again when this movie came out. Everyone was shocked at how amazing it was. Yeah, I think that, that it, it just hit the it hit the people at the right time in the right mm-hmm. way. It spoke to a lot of like little kids at that point, And it also sp- spoke to a lot of families. Not to mention the fact that the songs are, fin- the music is fantastic. And it really mm-hmm. is like the highlight of Disney's Renaissance. Uh, I think it's an important thing to remember that for these animated movies, Disney had a very different way of writing and building these. That these are were often 10, 10 to 7 year projects. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe Little Mermaid was closer to the 10 year mark uh, when it came to drawing everything. Because everything was hand drawn. Everything was... Uh, composed everything like that so i think that that's also something important yep. to remember with that you can you can learn more about the music composition in the uh, documentary howard which you can find on disney plus and it talks um about it in relation to howard who um actually did a lot of the writing and composing for the songs and um unfortunately passed away from aids so uh, you can learn more about that in the in that documentary, which is really good. And you'll actually see like the studios that they like recorded the songs and it's like amazing. It is. It's it's a really it's fun. And also if yeah. you just are a music fan, there are it's, some things that have so Howard, much good stuff in there. That you're just like, oh, oh my gosh, that's an earbug I didn't realize I had. Yeah. Uh but the first reason why this place is a masterpiece. Yeah. Is again song. those songs. songs. Jesus Christ. Under the sea yeah. is Probably the most catchy Disney song in the freaking world. So good. And uh, I will say the remake version of Under the Sea, I'm sorry, but it's got nothing on the original. The original is so good. Sebastian in the original is so good. And Under the Sea is a freaking masterpiece. Yes, uh, it is. It is so good. Poor Unfortunate Souls is probably oh up there with one of my, I think I have two favorite villain songs in, of all time. And Poor Unfortunate Souls is one of them. And I am sad that the body language, I understand why it's cut. It doesn't affect the whole song. I will just continue to re- listen to the original. But the yeah. body <laughs> language line is just so iconic. Of body language. So good. <laughs> so good. Uh, clever writing, clever storytelling. I mm. really think that um, what makes Little Mermaid so fantastic is Disney really took its cues from musical theater. Musical theater had this big, huge blow up in the 80s. And in the, and, and I think that it truly started looking at the things that like Guys and Dolls and the other musical theaters that like had musical theater that had been like blowing up during that time. Cats. Of of Cats. Yes, thank you. I knew there was another big <laughs> there one. There was another big 80s um, one. Um, Phantom Chica- of the Opera. Chica- another big Phantom 80s one. Phantom of the one. Opera. I think Chicago. Yeah. Chicago might have been 90s. But uh, of, of integrating songs with storytelling rather than it being separate. We see mm-hmm. a lot of separation in like Snow White and uh, Princess Aurora and or Sleeping Beauty and all of those like separation where the songs aren't in tw- integral to the story. Mm-hmm. And we see those things being twined because it takes its beat from musical theater. Yeah, li- literally think- Howard Ashman came in and taught Disney what an I want yeah. song is and what a villain song is. And they were all like, oh... Oh, interesting, you know, and so they structured it around really his guidance from what he knew from doing music, musical theater. Um, yes. So so that's that's why it's so good in, in the songs compared to really anything Disney had done prior. Yeah. And and it is it is in tr- like the songs are integral to the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that you have certain musical you have certain Renaissance to, like there were remake choices. Uh, that Disney chose not to make Cinderella a remake. 
because or the remake of Cinderella a musical because it didn't need to be again mm-hmm. before that time even Beauty and the Beast to some extent cut songs because they weren't as integral to the plot there certainly were still songs but uh I think Little Mermaid really shows how to twine in song songwriting in with the story as a whole Mm -hmm. and that's what makes these songs so amazing yeah you couldn't little mermaid wouldn't make any sense without the songs like if you don't have part of your world as like a song i don't think it makes any sense why ariel cares so much about going to the human world because if she's just explaining it she just sounds like a dumb teenager but when she sings about it you know that this is like the true passion within her heart and that it's not a choice that she's obsessed with humans. This is just what she's obsessed with. Yeah. Poor Unfortunate Souls. I think that you get so much from that song of not only seeing Ursula's manipulation, but understanding where Ursula, Ursula is coming from. And yeah. then also understanding the dynamic of knowing that Ursula is singing this all in front of Ariel. And Ariel can't hear it because she is that young naive teenager who's being taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. And like that just makes her even more villainous. And so... All it also transitions things. the movie from the first part of the movie to the second part of the movie. Like the entire with- action that transitions from yes. the underwater to the land part of the movie happens within that song. Yes. And it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And so much of the plot of like it being like, oh, this is this is like what's happening is mm-hmm. is is in those songs. The deal is made in that song. Mm-hmm. Uh, so without it, it wouldn't make any sense. Um, even Kiss the Girl. Like, so mm-hmm. much of the relationship is built on in Kiss the Girl. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, in it's the original amazing. movie, in the original movie, why why, um, why these two, you know, might actually fall in love for real as opposed to just being, like, in an infatuation, it happened. It, it wouldn't make any sense without Kiss the Girl. You wouldn't believe yeah. it without Kiss the Girl. No. And and I think like the only song that you could take away from this and it still not affect the story is Under the Sea, which is the earworm song. Mm-hmm. It is the I and also the intro song. Like I you didn't you don't need the original intro song. There could have been a different song. Um but uh, Under the Sea doesn't necessarily add anything, but it is the fun song that gets every kid to like literally stand up and dance. Which yep. is a huge part of like getting of understanding that it's really hard to ask a kid at four years old to sit for an hour and a half and watch a movie. And so to have a song that like gets their attention back in, gets them dancing is great marketing and great and great storytelling for kids. And I think also like the purpose of that song is so that you can kind of understand Trident's point of view a little bit because he's quite violent in this movie. And to hear that like, oh, living under the sea is good, actually, and it is legitimately confusing for them why Ariel wouldn't want this. And I think under the sea helps you empathize with that quite a lot. I also think the opening has a purpose for the time period, because at this time, Disney was not making musicals like Broadway style musicals. And so they have to they have to show you from go this is a musical guys it's a musical it's a musical it's a musical so we open with the sea shanty we go underwater triton's introducing his daughters via song so there is no mistake there is no why are they singing this is so weird which if you're not used to watching musicals like if you've ever watched a musical with somebody that is not familiar with musicals like That is the takeaway often is like, but wait, why are they singing? This is so weird. If you're not used to the medium, it is, it's weird. So Disney had to teach audiences that this is a musical and it's not weird, actually. Yes. Uh, It's just not a very good song. Well, I'm not saying it's a good song. The sea shanty is, but the beginning, I'm just like, I hate this song. But yes, it serves a purpose. (laughs) Um... (laughs) and and karen is sad that it was cut from <laughs> I, well i'm sad that the sea shanty was cut we'll we'll talk yes. about that when we talk about the live action i'm sad what and i'm sad what they replaced the sea shanty with um but yeah the songs in the original amazing a fucking amazing amazing what else the yeah. story itself it's gay. i think like it's it's gay it's it's a it's a very trans relatable story of mm. you are Uh Uh-oh, Zoom froze again. Anyways, what Landon was probably about to say 
is that it's a very relatable story for anybody. Hey, you're back. There we go. Oh, good. <laughs> I was trying to finish your sentence for you, but I didn't get there. Go ahead. <laughs> you are doing great. A very relatable story. Oh, I'm my stable. My internet is unstable. Oh boy. Just, so we'll see. It's a very relatable story. Um, of you are with a family dynamic of this is what you're expected to do. Mm -hmm. This is, this is the guidelines, the system that we are in. And if you want anything outside of this, it's just, we don't understand it. Why? And what Ariel does is break free of that. Mm -hmm. And what the little mermaid does is like, tell the story of a queer person without telling the story of a queer person yeah because then because this this struggle that basically in our society everybody that's queer goes through the truth is uh, most of us go through this period it's just that we decide to ostracize those that are lgbt right yes. but almost everyone has had some point where they're like i don't want to continue this aspect of the way i was raised and it yes. might not be this total transformation the way that Ariel goes through from living underwater to living on land, right? But I'm sure all of us have said like, no, I'm going to do that differently, right? Like whether for you, it's leaving or changing religions, um, yeah. whether it's like, you know, I don't want to do these certain traditions. Um, I want to live more structured or less structured than my parents raised me, you know, whatever it is. I, as an adult, most of us do not live exactly the same type of lifestyle that we lived growing up. And I think that that's what makes it incredibly relatable. Mm -hmm. Um but I think what makes it like uniquely queer is Triton and Triton's mm -hmm. reaction, like mm -hmm. Triton's mm -hmm. reaction to things. Yep. He destroys the things uh, that she had been collecting mm -hmm. in fear of her obsession with the human world. He, ba he like banishes the sea witch for her power of being able to do that. He like, there are huge, like, Triton in this original version is such an in like such a needed part of the story uh and understanding Ariel as a character and understanding what makes the story so relatable and call to so many queer kids yeah and uh, I, I think genuinely... it's very hopeful I think it's so yeah. helpful for for um, queer kids too watching this to say like, hey, the moral of this story is you should be yourself. Don't sacrifice yourself because if your parents are good people, they will eventually accept you, and you should keep trying. Which is what which is what happens. Like yeah. eventually, Triton comes back and and accepts her. Ariel is able to live the happily ever after that she really wanted. Understanding, understanding the uh, the the human world mm -hmm. it, it's it'll be also karen hasn't seen the sequels yet it'll no, be very interesting what she thinks of uh of little mermaid 2 i'm very yeah. interested to see okay spoilers uh, we are gonna we are going it's gonna be a while before we get to it but before the end of the year we are gonna do a follow-up episode about the the rest of the little mermaid death stuff disney produced so there's a prequel tv show um, and there are two movies. I have never seen the two movies, so I'm very excited. Um, I know basically Ariel has a kid, and that's kind of like, you know, that's what happens. But like, I've never seen them, so I don't know anything about them. Oh, it'll be very interesting. Yeah. Um, and then also, this doesn't necessarily have to do with why it's a masterpiece, but I think it's important to talk about that. This is my Disney movie. This mm -hmm. is like little. I think that every single little girl uh or disney fan of a of that age had a disney movie mm -hmm. uh and this this was mine i watched this movie non-stop on repeat i watched it for the characters i watched it for the people i watched it for the songs i watched it for the story uh i sang part of your world on several uh several talent shows many years in a row uh i could probably still pull out the whole song also not a singer so should not have been singing it <laughs> did anyway uh it is truly my my favorite it is my masterpiece uh and uh, because of that I'm incredibly biased which means that there is nothing wrong with this movie uh I will not hear <laughs> any slander on The Little Mermaid uh I cannot be unconvinced <laughs> <laughs> okay and 
in doing so, it that also then apparently relates to the into the remake because I yeah. feel very protective over the remake as well. Yeah, Landon was shockingly in favor of the and and wanted to defend and justify the things that are not so good in the remake. But before we well, spoilers, but before we get to that, I just want to say that um that although little mermaid was not my favorite i was more of like a beauty and the beast kind of girly um i uh i did love little mermaid like when this movie came out the following halloween you know what i was for halloween i was ariel you know with with like the little with like the little fishtail thing and yeah. i could only like wobble in it because it was all tied around my ankles <laughs> and i tried to treat it like that <laughs> i still go swimming and i still pretend to be a mermaid because of this movie oh my god i have i want a mermaid tale so bad because of this mermaid this Mm. movie little mermaid is my childhood yes so this is landon's movie so that should prepare you for for what's to come next because there's only to, to my mind and i basically agree there's only one flaw in this movie and it's really the chef um, character. I think oh, he's an true. annoying and um, and pointless. And the only reason he exists is mm-hmm. basically to give kids something to laugh at because they assumed that the kids were bored. And that's it. That's the only reason he exists. And I think he's bad. And I'm glad he's yes. not in the remake. <laughs> is it bad for the art? Yes. Is it good for the kids? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's in there. And I just think, I think it cheap, the, his scene cheapens the movie a little bit, um, in my personal opinion. Everything else about well, the movie is perfect, though. The Oscars disagreed with you. Well, I, know. Anyway. <laughs> I know. I know. I know they did. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about it. Okay. But before we get to that, <laughs> word from our sponsor. What? Oh my gosh. Um, Interstage Window is sponsored by Audible. As you guys know, when it comes to our podcast episodes like this, we are sponsored by Audible. And if you would like to get a 30-day free trial of Audible, please go to audibletrial.com slash interstage window. Um, you can get, if you like, the audiobook version of the original fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. However, because that book is on um, public domain, there are plenty of free versions as well. Um, so because of that, I, I'm not necessarily thinking that's what we should recommend. Landon, do you have a different re- audible recommendation for today? Oh, I I do. Um, here's the big thing. I don't very often, I'm a huge romance reader. Mm. And I recognize that uh, this is not, usually when we're doing stuff, I tend to not recommend like, romance novels because Mm -hmm. it's not the audience in place for it however i read a book on kindle unlimited that was so good that i bought it uh and karen i think you will like it too it is a romance book it is called oh it's not gonna show up okay it's called butcher and blackbird it is you should be it is on audible it is one of the best audiobooks ever because of the actor's chemistry, it's dual, it's dual POV, dual uh, two people reading it. Okay. Because of the actor's chemistry, because of uh, the pacing, and because of the book itself. It's amazing. Okay. It is about two serial killers as they fall in love. Uh, and they- Are they do... rival serial killers? Ish. It is okay. not enemies to lovers. It is raw. Okay. It is a rom com serial killer. Okay. Uh, and they start. They start out by playing a game where uh, a third party uh, knows who the victim is supposed to be, and they have to mutually figure it out and hunt that person. They're just given a location, oh. uh, and they're hunting other serial serial killers. So, but it is very fun watching them fall in love. It is complete and utter rom com. It's so unserious but so good uh it's amazing and i figured it's spooky halloween it's got all the things i need to tell karen about it and so i'll make i'll make a romance uh romance book you know uh, I, i'll let it i'll let it happen this this once oh i love the so idea it is of this and you know what we used to spicy. get we used to get rom-coms all the time from we Hollywood did. and they don't exist anymore. So they I don't. think, I think, you know, a, 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 a previous version of Karen would have been like, eh, rom-com, whatever. I don't think that's today, Karen, because we just don't get very many good rom-coms anymore. 
It's, uh, I think it is out of the, I think, well, I think a lot of the, the, like the idea of what rom-coms are revolved around really sexist ideas. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's really hard to justify spending as much money on a movie uh, mm. with that much sexism in it than it is to like, just write a book. And so the, the romance rom-com section of any, any bookstore is huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as far as movies go, this one is fantastic, and I would recommend. It's an easy five star read for me. It's a very fun. The Audible is great. The audio book on Audible is fantastic. You can buy it with a credit. It's so good. Um, would recommend. It is spicy. There is a little bit of gore, but nothing that anyone can't handle. Well, it's think. it's serial killer. So if there was zero gore, that would be kind of strange. Yes. What's the title? One more time. It's called Butcher and Blackbird. Butcher and Blackbird. I'm writing it in the chat in case anybody is interested. Blackbird. It's there we go. Butcher and Blackbird. Good. All right. So that's our By audible Bryn recommendation. Weaver. Yes. Okay. We are actually going to talk about, finally, the 2023 movie. Are you guys ready? I don't know if I'm ready, Landon. Are you ready? I, I don't think they are because I don't think. I think it'll be interesting. How mm-hmm. much of this will be a discussion and how much of this will be an argument between Karen mm. and I? <laughs> We don't know uh, a lot of it. <laughs> we right. have some disagreements, more so than normal. Yes, mostly because I'm biased. I do recognize <laughs> that I'm in the wrong here. And so you can choose to just not listen to me, except for our last slide. You have to listen to me on that one. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, let's All go. Right. <clears throat> okay, summary time. So mermaid. tell us what is actually different in this version compared to the Disney animated version. To be honest, not a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, the animation style is incredibly different. We're again, live action animation, which is in itself a weird uh, concept. Everything looks realistic. Everything is based off of realism, except for the mermaids themselves, because those would be manatees and no one wants to watch a movie about manatees. Except me. I want to watch a movie. I don't know. I think I'd anyway. be curious. I might watch it. <laughs> But yeah, except the mermaid tales, everything else is hyper realistic. Everything else is hyper realistic. Uh, a couple of things, uh, a couple of big changes to note that we won't deep dive. We're going to deep dive several of these things. Um, is the uh, Eric has a personality, mm-hmm. and it's cute, guys. Uh, it's good, it is, and it's good, and he's handsome, and he has a song. Uh, there is. A little less focus, in my opinion, at least, about it being about Eric and falling in love with Eric and uh, more about her wanting to be just a human. Uh, They're they're trying to go for the the girl power in this one, although the original had a lot of it. So it just feels a little extra. Yeah, it doesn't Um, feel weird. Like some of the time, like how they put some extra girl power on on Belle and Beauty and the Beast. The extra girl power here doesn't feel weird. It feels natural. It it, it feels natural. Uh, It feels very natural. Uh, And then we got some new songs. And mm-hmm. that's basically it, mm-hmm. except for the things that we don't like. So I figured yeah. we'll talk about a couple of the things that we don't like separately because mm-hmm. some of those changes aren't great. But first, well, before we but before we do that, I just want to point out a couple of additional changes that we're not going to talk oh, about. Sorry. So yes. when this movie opens, you don't have an opening oh, song. Yes. So there are no songs until you get to part of our world. So what that means is that if you never saw the original, there's a little bit of context missing. So what they do instead of the sea shanty at the beginning is they have the humans actually like spear fishing at what they think is a mermaid. It's not. It's like a dolphin or or something. It's a dolphin. Yeah. So the humans immediately from go instead of a sea shanty. Guess what? The humans are literally evil. We're going to show you how evil they are. Okay. The other big change related to hu- humans are evil, explicit, not just Trident's opinion. It's, it's explicit this time is um, that Ariel's mother was actually killed by a human. That's why she's not there anymore. And Triton yes. blames her her mother's curiosity about humans and desire to learn more about humans as why she got killed and that's why like Ariel feels the way she feels so there there's there's little more changes we're going to talk more about Trident so but I just want to talk about the the music for a little bit and the humans are evil I, now a little bit 
I do appreciate that Disney is, see, I'm already trying to defend it. I yep. do appreciate that Disney <laughs> is trying to acknowledge the, the, the missing parents. Because there is an age of missing parents. I feel like the best marketing that Disney could have ever done was to, on the back of milk cartons, put the faces of the missing parents. Because we, do, a lot of movies, we don't understand why mom is missing this like that. I do appreciate that we find out a little bit more about Ari- Ariel's mother. In the same we'll way talk that I about, appreciated, we'll talk about we that found moment. out. I was going to say the same way that I I appreciated we found out about Belle's mother in Beauty oh, and the yeah. Beast. I I do appreciate it that they're they're filling those gaps that we always wondered. Uh, you know, and it brings a little bit more tragedy into the story. But we'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about that um, when we talk more about Triton. But yes, I wanted to acknowledge some of that too. But yeah, okay. Yes. So now before we get to more bitching about the changes, let's talk about what we actually liked. Because guess what, guys? This movie isn't terrible. It's I good. know. What the heck? It's not. It's, it's, an, it's, an, entertaining, it's an entertaining movie. Mm-hmm. I We liked parts of it. Yeah. Or all of it. But Karen liked parts of it. I liked parts and of so- it. <laughs> and, and even though you, you did really like it, I don't think you would call this a masterpiece the way you would call the original animated a masterpiece. No, no, no. no. The original animated is a masterpiece. This is not a masterpiece. But yeah, this is just movie. this is just a good movie for you, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And to I me, this the, was a I pass- would put this on. Yeah, and this was a passable movie to me. Not terrible yeah. as I thought it was going to be. Fair. Yes. Uh, it's it's light years away from like Lion King. Mm-hmm. Oh God, yes. So, <clears throat> all right. The actors. Yes. Most of the actors. Yes. Okay. Are fantastic. So good. Okay. I will, here's, here's my shout outs. I've got four actors that I want to shout out. Ariel, we already talked about why she's amazing. Okay. Eric, we've kind of already talked about. Like, he sold me. He's so charming. He's so cute. He's so good. He's everything, he's everything Eric could be without ruining Eric. Yes. He's he, a great and job. he plays it so good. Okay. And he plays, Other, yeah. The chemistry yeah. between them is really good, too. Yes. Next, Melissa McCarthy, y'all, she's actually good in this. I was so scared. Ursula is my favorite. And I, it's 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 Ursula and Scar. And we saw what they did to Scar. And oh I God. just was sitting here and like, Melissa McCarthy? Mel- like, I was originally a Melissa McCarthy fan when she was in Girl More Girls. And then she got big and popular and was more comedic than anything and I was just like I don't like it and then I was like that's what you're gonna do to my Ursula you're gonna give her the Melissa McCarthy effect and I just was very scared of it and very much didn't like it and she blew us away she nailed it she's good nailed it Mm -hmm. did the same thing that Halle Bailey Bailey did of taking Mm -hmm. the essence and the spirit of Ursula and interpreted it as her own yes yeah so it's still Ursula Okay, last shout out. She only gets like four seconds of screen time, but y'all, the girl that plays Vanessa, she chews the scenery. Like when she, there's a tra- the transformation scene where she goes from back from herself back into Ursula. The The moments that it's her, like she is exaggerated. She is over the top. She is exactly what you would expect like a stereotypically pretty Ursula to behave like. Like she's just amazing. She's barely in the movie, y'all, but she was so good. Like she deserves all the praise for her four minutes that we get of her. Amazing, beautiful, fantastic. Um, You go girl. She did fantastic. And here's the deal. As the, as (laughs) as a little lesbian Landon as a young girl was always like why is that one so pretty I love her so much and then <laughs> as now a adult woman who I I looked at this and I went yeah same same little girl Landon would have had a crush on this version of Vanessa as well absolutely <laughs> yeah she's good she's good y'all she's great Mm-hmm. Now, not all of the actors are good, okay? They're, if we didn't mention them, that means either we have no opinion or we have problems with them. So just know that. But those four that we mentioned, we love them and we thought they did a fantastic job. Just hang out. You'll mm-hmm. get you'll get mm-hmm. you'll get to hear about it. Uh-huh. The music <clears throat> and the composing. Lynn Manuel Miranda did an amazing job. He kept the spirit of Howard alive mm-hmm. in adding those new songs. He made the interim and the interludes between scenes fantastic. I just, 
we all know that I'm a Lynn fan, but I think Karen even agreed that like it was on point. Yeah, I I hate that I like Lynn Manuel or Miranda because I don't. But then when I hear his stuff, I'm like, oh wait, he's talented. God damn it! Um, and that's what happened with this one too. Like you know, he was tasked with doing some new songs. He was tasked with doing some line changes, and what he did was good. Like there was nothing in there that I thought was like not matching. Um, the Little Mermaid. The only nitpick that I have for this point is when Ariel goes on land and she loses her voice, she still sings in her head. And to yeah. me, but that's not Lynn's fault, okay? To me, that was the writers, like not um, sticking to their conceit. Like she's good. And I think that they might've been nervous that she was the only good thing in the movie. And so they couldn't just take away her voice for half the movie. And so they gave her these singing in her head songs. And I didn't dislike the songs or anything. I just thought it was weak writing. I think that it's, I think that it's in, in the, in our, the whole year of 2023, it's very, very hard I think to sell the concept of a main character of a main female protagonist who is silent for more than half the movie. Mm -hmm. And I think that that wouldn't have gone over well either. Um, I, I think it worked in the eighties and early nineties because, you know, women weren't expected to talk then anyway. And our attention and... spans have become crap. <laughs> we have no attention spans uh, anymore. But I, I but I, I genuinely do think that like, what if I mean I, I think that that especially when we're at the writing process there is no guarantee that Eric would be charming and mm -hmm. cute and a good guy to be around mm -hmm. and so having so much be dependent on that I think is a is a hard choice to make and I think that I don't like that they betrayed their conceit it's it, it didn't work for me either i understand like part of this is i understand why they did it like i don't think this, her this being is silent for half the movie, things i don't think her <laughs> being silent for half the movie would go over well anymore i don't think it'd fly well we wouldn't know because we didn't get to see that version it wouldn't have fl flew you would have sat there and said i'm complaining that it took so long for her to talk again I don't know. I have no idea if I would say that or not. I don't know. I, I just know that I didn't. I, I just felt weak. Like when I watched it, yes. I was like, y'all are weak cowards. That's like what was the thought in my head. Not that the songs that she sang in her head were bad, but just no. that y'all are cowards for putting these in here. <laughs> I wish but otherwise the another... music is amazing. <laughs> I wish there had been another way of her like figuring out how to communicate, whether it be like writing song lyrics yeah. or something that she would later then sing, like doing something, uh, mm -hmm. finding some way to like, Communicate to like because that was always the bad thing too of being like she can commute like she could figure out how to communicate with this guy mm -hmm. she could figure it out <laughs> yeah and in this one because they add so much more to Eric's character like she still doesn't talk to him but there is yeah. more opportunity for her to convey her feelings and thoughts to him yes. and that's part of what makes her so good in this movie is the expressions that she makes she make she communicates just fine without words yes she really does. Yeah. So she did not need that. She didn't um, need it. All right. And then the colorblind casting. Yeah, I liked that part. Uh, why we, uh, while we were talking about this and planning this out, uh, we brought, I brought up uh, Hammerstein's Cinderella. Mm -hmm. And why we haven't done a deep dive on that is beyond me, because that's something that we absolutely love. We love the colorblind casting of, the, of that early 90s movie mm -hmm. of like everybody not understanding how any of the genetics work and we don't need to <laughs> it's very theater right it's very broadway very and um and and that's why i loved it so like whenever whenever we have the the scene where all the the sisters come in there's no song right but you do see all their beautiful tales and you see that the sisters are all like a wide variety of different looks for the women and they're all colorblind casted. And I was like, oh, I just loved it. I loved seeing them all come in in this very diverse way and being able to tell that there was a mermaid for every little girl. And it didn't matter um, what you looked like or um, how you moved. There was a mermaid for every little girl. And uh, and that just like made my heart so full to see that um, that we that they did that. And that continues into the human world. The human world is also colorblind casted. So it wasn't like colorblind casting is this fantasy thing that happens in the mermaids under the sea. It's throughout the whole movie. So the I was movie. just like, oh, I love this. 
And I hope that becomes the standard for Disney movies. Yes. I think I genuinely think Disney is a large enough tycoon in the film industry that if they continue, if this is something that they as a company support and really get behind and require for all of their directors, it will change the industry. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. because disney is the industry at this point that's why it will change it (laughs) well we have some other big players out there but disney is a huge one disney is gigantic so yeah we loved the colorblind casting we thought it was great um so yeah everybody that that complained about it like i'm sorry y'all are just wrong just go watch the movie it's not bad when you watch it it doesn't look weird or off like you might expect it's good um all right you ready to get into the bad stuff Okay, so now we're going to talk about the cringe. <laughs> ah! Okay, a little jump scare there first for you guys. Holy shit, sorry. I didn't warn you. Yeah, okay. So um, <laughs> there's a couple things we disliked. Um, I think the first of which is was that jump scare, right? That They just look bad. Y'all, Flounder and Sebastian look terrible. They look so bad, and their voice actors aren't that good, so there's no saving them. I'm sorry, this this remake Sebastian, compared to the original Sebastian, is night and day. The new guy's not good. I, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sure he's good in other things, but as a voice actor for Sebastian. Don't say that. He's fantastic. He's just I'm sure bad he in this is. movie. I, I don't, but he's uh, not good in this movie. Sorry. No, he's, he's, he is, he is not. He, yeah, he's uh, he did the thing, he did the thing um, that... I was very scared was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And that was um, you were going to not take the essence and the soul of a character and make it your own. You were just going to take this, the character. Uh, I, I compared it to as if Will Smith just did exactly what Robin Williams did, which yeah. he didn't do. The reason why the genie was somewhat entertaining and was successful for Will Smith is because Will Smith was able to make it his own. He didn't. He didn't make mm-hmm. Sebastian his own. The he didn't. Jamaican he tried accent, to do an impression. The... He tried to do an impression yes. and he failed at it because the impression um, wasn't any good. And I love this actor. Like, I lo- I'm trying What's to What's his name? Are you looking at looking uh, it up? Yeah. I am looking it up. Uh, he was in Hamilton. He's been in a whole bunch of things. Um, yeah, I'm, l- I'm looking it up. Oh, knocked my microphone all over the place. Sorry. Little Mermaid. Um... David Diggs. It was David oh, Diggs. Diggs. Yes. Oh yeah, I do like him, but I didn't like um, him in and this. And he's fantastic. He is an incredibly talented musician. He's an incredibly talented singer. He's a Broadway star. Uh, he has been in several other things, uh, Hamilton, but also other movies. Uh, he is he is great, and I love his personality and who he is as a person. Like as far as the, his brand. He just did not do a good job. Yeah, the original uh, Sebastian I, is Samuel E. Wright. Um, yes. And yeah, like if you watch these back to back, you'll see what I'm talking about. David Diggs is trying to do an impression of what Samuel E. Wright did. And it's just a bad impression. And I think every single Disney movie has that character. Yeah. That one character that is the standout character that cannot be replaced. You know, like to give another example, uh, if they redid Hercules, nobody could play Phil except for uh, uh Danny, DeVito. D- Danny yeah, DeVito Danny DeVito oh my like, god no never one tried to step into that, that role I'm so sorry for you <laughs> no one else could have done the genie except for Robin Williams exactly yeah. the way that the genie did they had to rework it they had they have to do something new and Sebastian is this ca- this movie's character uh I also think hey Lunar. Disney just has to accept hi Lunar I think Disney just has to accept they can't have animal best friends if they're going to do live action. Yes, because they look so bad. They look so stupid next to Ariel. So st- all just... three, Flounder, Sebastian, and Scuttle, all three look so stupid when they're interacting with Ariel. They have no, they're they're like yeah. no expression. Like just these these like weird eyes. And they, they just, it just doesn't work. It looks bad. It, it looks like Ariel is crazy talking to these animals. And I think, like, there is that concept of, like, being able to do, like, have that that's part of, like, the princess thing as having an animal sidekick. And I think that they just need to figure out how to make those animals 
human or mm-hmm. make those animals not talk like because yep. I think if she had just had a fish that followed her around and didn't talk and was flounder and had a a merman mer, mer, mer woman mermaid friend then that could have been a solution maybe if they were uh, really committed to these hyper realistic animals but that could have maybe I, worked but like, but like, I I think that an animated talking animal is just not. It hasn't worked yet. Nope, it, it's been bad it hasn't every worked yet. time. I think the only place that it worked, quote unquote, and I don't even think it was animated. I'm trying to think if a boo from Aladdin was animated. Was no, I think they. Animated? I mean, I'm sure he was, was partially computer animated, but also a boo doesn't talk. Didn't talk. Yeah, that's the thing of like, I think that that's the only time that it was successful is a boo didn't talk. Like, yeah. you cannot have a talking he, animal. He really is like a pet. Like, Aladdin interacting with a boo is the same as like me interacting with my cat. My cat's not going to talk back, you know? Yeah, I think that it just, it, it forms the uncanny valley, re- but it also like is not realistic. It just doesn't work. It just looks bad. Also, it looks bad. Also, can I go off on a tangent here? I'm yes, so sorry. Yeah. I, I'm so sorry, um, Miss Aquafina. I'm sure you're pleasant in real life, but I, I can't fucking stand Aquafina. On Aquafina, Scuttle, as soon as Scuttle, because I didn't even know. I didn't look this up before and I didn't know. Scuttle opened his ma- his mouth and I was like, is that Aquafina? And I Googled it and it was Aquafina and I hated everything that came out of Scuttle's mouth. He was, he's annoying in the original. He's supposed to be kind of annoying, but in this, he is extra annoying and he has a song and she sounds so bad when she's doing it anyway so scuttle is extra bad of the three um and but but he has the same problem where when ariel interacts with him it's just so awkward because he has no expression because he looks like a literal seagull and that's on hallie hallie is acting for her life and doing the best thing but like like and i was talking to karen about this too is so much of sebastian and so much of scuttle are physical comedy yeah, like the that whole point of Sebastian ex- is like to bounce around like crazy. Yeah, to bounce around, to open his jaw, to yeah. like have his wide expressive eyes. Like that's something that he does constantly. Yeah. And that's part of what makes him funny. Mm-hmm. And when you have a real cl- crab that has tiny little eyes and barely any mouth and can't do that physical comedy and can't interact with Ariel or other animals for that physical comedy, mm-hmm. it doesn't work. Nope. Yep. So even if David Diggs had done a good job for the voice, it wouldn't have mattered. The character still would have sucked. It still would have been cringy. Yeah. Because like the voice actor for Flounder is fine. He doesn't do a terrible job. And I still thought Flounder was terrible. But yeah, but like Flounder just taught like, yeah, the the interaction other than like talking and communicating and being in the same screen is limited it's not like they're touching each other it's not like anything like that so much as sebastian is he's jumping Mm -hmm. around dancing around doing the thing it just doesn't work it doesn't Uh, it's disney disney needs to give it up you if you're gonna have humans you need to accept the fact that your animals can't talk yeah they've got to commit like this whole this whole like halfway thing where they want to have the hyper realistic animals but still have them behave as if they're animated animals like just stop like if you really want them to be hyper realistic you've got to rework the way that the parts work and mm-hmm. they 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 weren't willing to do that in this and yet they wanted the hyper realistic like beautiful tech demo and like they do look beautiful like fla- like you know what like if flounder well, was just a fish it would be cool looking but he's not he's supposed to talk and then when he starts doing this it just i can't mm-mm. no mm-hmm. No. And and it doesn't it doesn't work and they need to accept it and they need to figure out a way to go around it. Or just don't do this. That- or just don't give them eyebrows. Okay, like the Lion King. Like the the lions in the original animated Lion King, they look like lions with eyebrows. Just give everyone eyebrows. They already have solved this problem years ago. Do the eyebrows. And I bet it will work. It, it won't. You don't want to see eyebrows. I want to see someone try. I want to see some because at least it would look funny. At least right. it would be interesting any, and amusing. If we have any <laughs> animators watching, please just take a scene of of. Please just take a screenshot of of. Eyebrows. Uh, I want to see Flounder and Add Sebastian eyebrows. with eyebrows. <laughs> I can't. You would have hated it. I want to right. see it. <laughs> the next thing we hated. It doesn't need to be that long. It was so much longer than the original animated the for original, no reason. The original with credits. 
skims just under an hour 30. Perfect length for a child movie. This movie's two length. hours, y'all. It's two hours. On Disney Plus, it's two hours and 20 minutes. The last 20 minutes are commercials. This movie is literally two hours. Don't get me wrong. There are a few things that they have, a few scenes and a few songs. But a lot of it is also filler. Yeah. A lot of it is also like, as much as I love the scenery and as beautiful as it was, was, like, it's them lingering on the scenery uh, just over and over and over. It's this that is like my big issue and the thesis of of this whole thing that I'm going to talk about in a bit. But like, know your audience. Are you Mm -hmm. trying to appease the four to seven year old who is watching this? Because if you are, the long drawn out scenes of under the water landscape is and and cityscape is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to appease the Disney freaks the disney like adults <laughs> if you're making remaking it for the disney these adults movies, remaking <laughs> these movies aren't gonna work period end of story yeah so like who is this for which we're gonna so talk about in a for? second so like i've got a couple of examples of places where i thought they could cut the length why is scuttle's terrible song two verses give me just one if you must do this to my ears okay two there's a bunch of um added scenes to the the coach ride that ariel takes with eric that are completely useless and the reason they're completely useless is because there's a scene they added in that's actually good where eric shows ariel his collection of weird shit okay so because they added that scene they could have made the coach ride scene just very brief they didn't need this long drawn out thing and it takes forever where ariel goes you know in the original anime movie ariel goes like really fast and eric's like oh my god yeah it's like just crazy and like they i i like that scene because it's like good adrenaline for eric so you can see why eric is falling for her but they didn't need it to be as long as it was. It takes no. forever to get through that coach scene. There's so many scenes in the beginning before we even get to part of your world that are just shots of the ocean. I don't need 20 of these. One would be sufficient. Yes. That And and, and it's, it's I just like, cut why? 20 minutes why? from the movie right there. You did. Right there. Perfect. And then it's enough time to add a few songs and enough time to, to add a few s- landscapes, but didn't need everything. <sighs> It's so long, y'all. It's so long. I had to watch it in two parts. So the original movie, I can sit and watch it all in one setting and not have to like really be distracted. Like I might have to get up and pee or whatever, right? But I'm not going to be distracted. This movie, I had to watch the first hour and then I had to watch the second hour the next morning because I couldn't keep my attention. It's too long. Too long. All right. Triton. Okay. So- we talked about how important Triton is to the story, mm-hmm. right? Triton is integral. He's an added character he, that didn't exist in the Hans Christian Andersen version and then was added in order to add pressure and that idea of the standards that ex- mm-hmm. and expectations that uh, she was supposed to live. I mean, he, he is the whole conflict in the original animated movie. So yes. he is integral to what makes this Disney's version. Triton is so toned down in this movie for a reason. We're going to talk about that in and a that second. Is, but... <laughs> yeah, we will talk about that in a second. But so toned down that he is boring. Yeah. And there is no believable conflict. Yeah. He's so boring in this, y'all. So boring. And, uh, and here's the reason. Because it's live action. And if they had Triton be as shitty as he is in the first half of the original movie, he would be legitimately scary to children. Um, And Landon had pointed this out to me. Like, you know, if you have an abusive parent at home, seeing this from someone who looks realistic would be really challenging for, unfortunately, a lot of kids to watch. And so they tone him down. They tone him down. Yeah. I was going to say, even if they don't have an abusive, like to watch a adult... Yeah. Treat a child that you are supposed to root for in a way of destroying her stuff, of screaming at her, mm-hmm. of being the villain and scary the way that he is portrayed in the original would tra- it would traumatize any kid regardless of it would like, be hard it, to watch. It, it would be hard for them to watch and not be scared of a real life man. 
Yeah. And then that gets up like that then alienates the people that you are marketing towards. Mm -hmm. So what you end up with in the live action is he's super toned down while at the same time being far more justified in his violent actions than he was in the original. Because remember, we talked about how in this one it is from go humans are evil. That is what this movie statement is. Like they show them trying to kill like a dolphin porpoise thing, right? They explain that the whole reason that Ariel's mother is dead is because of humans, right? So Trident is super justified in his violence towards Ariel's human obsession, right? Yet he's more toned down in this one, which causes it to basically look, it causes him to basically look completely toothless and boring. And it's just, it's just bad because that means that the conflict isn't there. Yeah. And I, I don't think the actor was that great. He's fine. This was a choice with the writers and also a choice with the director and a choice probably made by Disney itself mm -hmm. uh, to do this. But uh, it, you took you, you took away an actor's arms and told him to act like that's basically what you did. Yeah, they and took the whole conflict away. They took everything. Like and, nothing and it bad made happens it... in this movie now. Yeah, nothing. Nothing is bad enough in this movie to get like. Okay, let's call it what it is, right? Like Ursula grooms Ariel. Yes, like she still, comes in happens. and and it still happens. But she comes into a hurt and vulnerable child who has been alienated by its family. That is like a that is that is a circle that happens. Yeah, the alienation doesn't happen in this one. The hurt mm -hmm. doesn't happen in this one. So Ariel's man, like the manipulation that happens to Ariel is so less realistic and unjustified uh, of like being like, well, why didn't you just tell like someone that, that mm -hmm. like, you know, talk, your dad's not going to scream and shout and destroy your shit. So like talk to him about it or like, like the, the secret of being taken away and manipulated by this adult, it doesn't seem as real without that happening because she isn't vulnerable and sad mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. and and just uh, to be clear like all the the events still happen like triton still yes. gets mad at ariel he still breaks some of her stuff like this stuff still happens but he does it in such a toothless like mundane way that when you're watching it from a movie perspective it just doesn't feel as impactful like when you're watching the original animated movie and triton is doing these things you're like wait a second, Triton, you were going way too far. Like, I get that she is not living up to your expectations, but this is ridiculous. But in the movie, yeah. you're kind of, in this new movie, you're kind of like, well, Triton, I kind of get it and I kind of agree with you. And here's the other reason why I think it's easier to agree with Triton in this one is that because Sebastian is so bad, Under the Sea, the song that's supposed to make you feel okay with what try like a little bit more on tried inside and, and understanding of what he's doing doesn't make you feel that way okay it doesn't like the new the new version of under the sea makes you feel like well so under the seas literally got all the same stuff it's not better whereas when you watch the animated one you're like actually life under the sea sounds pretty fucking cool maybe i want to be a mermaid maybe you know? i want to be <laughs> yeah uh, but in this new one you don't me. feel that so like all the elements are not there for triton to evoke any of the same feelings that he evokes in the original animated movie. I think it's a lot harder to empathize and connect with Earth with uh, Ariel. Like yeah. that's what it does. Is it? It all of a sudden like you took the arms away from the actor of Triton, and then you undercut Ariel's legs. Like because all of a sudden before we're like, yeah, girl, get out, do your thing, get safe, go to the scary sea witch, and now we're just like, Ariel, don't, don't do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you're it's fine you're fine <laughs> yeah it, you get much more the feeling in this one that if she just waited a couple hours for triton to calm down she could totally go talk to him and he would it, under, he would like listen and they could come to a compromise i guess the thing is is that like it feels more like a teenager who had a fight with her dad yes that it does feel like someone who is so desperate to get out of yeah. the situation they are not supposed to be in exactly and like that undercuts the queer storyline. It undercuts like all the way of, of connecting to the story. Like that's that's the thing. Of yeah. yeah, all the stuff still happens, but the 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 message behind it is so much less mm -hmm. intense. Yep, because of the way it's shot, because of the way it's acted, you don't get the same feelings from it. Even though on paper it's the same stuff. Yes. So. And it's Trident's fault. It's all the character Trident's fault. All the characters Trident's fault. Yep. 
All right. So now we ask the question. No. Who, who is this movie for? Yeah. Landon, tell I, us. I have, I like, listen, this was our big, Karen and I got into a very large discussion. Usually when we're planning these things out, we'll debate a couple of things back and forth, but most of the time we see things the same way. And I think that instead of talking about what we were going to talk about for the entire time, most of our planning session was on this debate mm -hmm. uh, of, of understanding who this movie is for, because we have come at every single Disney remake mm -hmm. from the perspective of it being for us for disney adults. and the reality for disney adults and the reality is that it's not it's not for us uh and i think that that's the because they're remaking our movies and our childhood we have this grasp and control on it that we want it to have the masterpiece sort of thing and the reality is, is that it's A, not going to be because it's not that time, that era, that age. And B, they're remaking things, A, for the marketing value, but also because I believe that the old originals are unwatchable to children in this day and age. I hate that uh, I kind of think that you're right on that. So let me let me just say my piece yeah. on this. No, go so ahead. I don't disagree that this movie is for kids and not us. What I disagree with is the idea that kids deserve what they're getting here. I think they deserve better. They deserve to be swept away by magic the way that we were when we were watching the Disney Renaissance movies as kids. And I, it breaks my heart to hear that they feel like, okay, these kids aren't swept away by those movies anymore, so they're going to remake them, fine. But when they remake them, they remake inferior versions. Even though, like, I found this movie passable and Landon found it good, do you hear either of us saying that this new one is a masterpiece that's worthy of, like, these big feelings that these movies gave us when we were kids? Like, no. And so I even... If I think like, okay, these changes that they made because it's for kids and because it's live action now or whatever, that means, that says to me that we are not giving our kids the entertainment they deserve. And I don't like that either. I think that that's part of the wheel. Uh, our parents probably think that there were movies of the 90s and 80s that we loved and consider masterpieces that they felt were not. Um, the, the issue is that these are remakes and yeah. I think because there's a remake, there's a direct comparison. Yeah. Um, kids and my big argument on this is kids these days have so much access to, uh, AI and to being able to have like realism, realistic animated filters, uh, that being able to connect emotionally to cartoons on the same level that we used to connect to cartoons, I don't think happens as much. I'm not saying that kids aren't watching cartoons, but if you think of the modern day cartoons that are out and accessible for kids, most of them are not about humans. Most of them are animals. Most of them are animated animals, trucks, toys, anything like that. They're not humans. The things that they are watching that are hu about humans are live action. And so being able to have these stories be accessible means that we have to make them on a live action sort of scale so that kids can understand and connect to them. I hate this. Uh, I hate this. I hate it so much. What happens when you I, let technology I am old, grow? <laughs> I am old man screaming at clouds. <laughs> it's, I hate it's, this. <laughs> it's scary. And I think to an I, I think to an extent, um, you're absolutely right. But I also think that like it's that same thing of being like, kids don't know that they deserve better. Like kids don't know that there is better out there. This 
might be for us it's not a masterpiece but for some kid some black girl who never saw herself as a disney princess before this this might be a masterpiece well i do agree with that i do agree with that because little because little black girls don't deserve tiana being a frog for majority of her movie oh like that was not good so like i do agree with that and that's why the colorblind casting is part of what i actually really enjoyed about this movie absolutely yes and but like we don't get to say what is a masterpiece for the next generation. That's not for us to decide. And do I believe does like kids deserve better? Yes. I don't think Disney, I am under a no pretenses that Disney is under a renaissance right now in regards to its movies. I think the TV renaissance is happening, but I don't think it is in regards to its movies. Mm. Um. But I also think that there are stories that are being told that kids are connecting to and are going to make those masterpiece scenarios. It just won't be this one. I can't wait to see in like 10, 15 years, um, the, uh, this, this version of the video essay of like, um, the Star Wars prequels were good actually. Uh, from kids watching these movies i can't wait to see the lion king remake is good actually from some freaking gen alpha child and i'm like what's wrong with you (laughs) i can't wait i can't wait uh (laughs) that will entertain me okay that will very much entertain me i'll be i'll be like old you know old with my bifocals on being like child what please what what yeah (laughs) what and i'll watch the whole two hours (laughs) Of this I video won't. essay. Uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll only happen when they're angry that it's being remade into a TikTok or something like that, rather than an entire <laughs> movie. I don't know. Whatever happens in 20 years. Uh, but I, I think that the, like that's the important thing of, like, for me, watching this movie and realizing of being like, I, I almost don't feel like it's, like, I can't judge it the same way I can judge the stuff that was made for me because I'm not the audience that it was made for. All the other things like uh, Hunger Games, Harry Potter, the things that we discuss here are made for our consumption or were made for our consumption or we consumed it when it was marketed towards us. This, I think, is slightly marketed towards us, but not really. And we have faked because out. Of- <laughs> yeah i i think that it's i think that it's an it's a it's an opportunity for disney to sit there and be like hey we got easy money from those disney adults but really who matters the kids are what matters in this the kids are what's going to buy people in and we need to make movies that are interesting for kids well i think they um, can i think they can make movies that are interesting for both because the original little mermaid adults loved it too and the reason that they loved it is they were able to see the dynamic between triton and ariel and um a fantasy version of something that they likely either perpetrated or experienced um and so like it's just not that way anymore. Like, I feel like what makes the Disney Renaissance movies so uniquely good is that they're true four quadrant animated movies, which you don't really yes. get much of anymore. And these remakes are not. They are they are pretending to be four quadrant movies, but they are not. But I also think movies are dying. Yeah. I think movies are a dying industry. Oh my gosh, we're back to this and... conversation every time. Yes. <laughs> Preach so it. I, I think we're going to see l- and have seen less and less masterpiece movies mm-hmm. of the traditional media because they're they're becoming like who wants to sit for an hour and a half movie that feels rushed, incomplete, like doesn't feel the same thing that a 10 episode miniseries can now do. I mean, I mean, I mean, streaming killed so, the movies. So once again, you, streaming killed the movie star. Like that's what we're so saying you, again. <laughs> so you know what's actually going to happen is that it's not going to be a TikTok of uh, Lion King. They're going to be angry that there's a ten episode, uh, ten episode mini series of the Lion King, uh, li- <laughs> live action maybe, or yeah, a live action ten episode mini series of the Lion King, and they're going to be like, they ruined Lion King, and we're going to laugh and watch the mini series. Oh my god! Oh my god! 
Okay, so we have come to the end of our Little Mermaid versus discussion. So yes, Alpha Tiff, yes, I agree. Oh my God. <laughs> so Landon, we're going to ask the question that we ask at the end of all of them. So when it comes to the Little Mermaid, which of these stories resonate? The original. Well, the, the, orig animated. the original Disney, the anim animated original. Yes. And because I too am a messy gay, a little bit of the original original uh mostly i love that for you i understand the story i understand the concept of being like hey. and you know what you deserve an immortal soul for not murdering when you could have murdered too honestly <laughs> yes <laughs> that is the answer uh oh. but but in all seriousness the original animated uh little mermaid is my little mermaid it is my childhood it is my movie it is my go-to uh it's everything i love i wish i wish the live action little mermaid couldn't capture the same magic i'm sad that it didn't i am grateful for what was good about it though and i am grateful mm -hmm. that another generation of little girls and some other little girls that might not have originally connected to the little mermaid will get to connect to the story and get to feel seen in it mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is magical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what about you karen which so, one of these resonates the the animated one of course i love the animated one there's so much to love about it um as we spoke about during kind of the middle section of this stream um, the new one, I think there's, there's elements of it that I really enjoyed, particularly certain performances, as we mentioned, and particularly the changes that they made to Eric. But overall, the, the only thing in the new one that resonates with me more than the animated is the romance aspect. The romance is kind of inconsequential in the in the animated one in the live action one it actually kind of makes sense and it's very cute but otherwise it doesn't resonate um the original fairy tale it the original fairy tale the ending loses me i'm sorry it's a little silly it doesn't resonate with me there's a lot I, of beauty in the in the way that things are phrased and paced yes. in the story but the ending it loses me and so so really the only one that truly resonates with me um also is the animated one I should also say that I guess I don't resonate with the Little Mermaid story. I think I just resonate with Hans Christian Andersen. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can be like, I think you can be like, you know, in another life where I didn't have as many responsibilities, I might have done the same. I think that's where I you might can have, feel it. <laughs> I might have been the messy gay to do that. Uh, Unfortunately, oh, responsibilities it. keep you from your true nature, right? <laughs> Tragedy. <laughs> all right so yeah where can, where can they you find, find you us yay okay so um for this stream we are going to be streaming for for two more hours we're going to be doing our hardcore classic world of warcraft challenge yes we haven't died yet so we are continuing um tomorrow we're going to be streaming more of our pleasant view we're going through round four of summer with everybody as kind of like a little break in the final fantasy thing so that's that about that also reminding you guys we're streaming on both twitch and youtube so if you came in late today you can actually go to the youtube stream and rewind and play it at like two times speed to catch catch up to like where we are right now. That's something Twitch doesn't let you do, but YouTube does. Um, so yeah, that's all the places that you can find me. I know that's a Twitter icon, um, but it's really blue sky, y'all. I'm done with Twitter. I'm done with Twitter. It, I'm on blue sky. That's what's up. Well, Twitter, Twitter's um, dead. There's yeah, no such and like, Twitter anymore. And like, and I, and I'm so, and like, I was talking about this with my husband the other day and he's like, you mean X? And I said, no, we dead name Twitter in this household. <laughs> Um, oh, I will not use it. the new new name ever. I'm sorry, Elon Musk, but this is how it is. Um, I don't respect aren't, you. Companies aren't people. They don't yeah. get hurt feelings if you dead, date, dead exactly. name them. Don't exactly. dead name people, dead name companies. Yes. What's Blue Sky? Blue Sky is new Twitter, basically. If you would like an invite, I have lots and lots of codes. Just hit me it's up. Like run by, it's like run by all the people who left Twitter when Elon took it over. It's yeah, like it seems similar. like that. It's basically the same thing. Now, it's because it's new, it's missing a lot of features. Like, there's no DMs on on Blue Sky. You know, some things are a little bit weird, but it's it's Twitter. It's Twitter, you know? Um, I'd like one. No problem, girl. No problem. I will get you an invite. I have many. So just hit me up if you want to get on the blue sky. I'll, I'll hook you up. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find me. Where can everybody find you, Landon? 
You can find me at Land in Maine. It's a pun uh, on both Instagram and TikTok. Mm-hmm. And please follow me because in the next month, there's going to be something kind of cool coming out. Uh, and secret hints are going to start being released every so often from there. So come check it out, please. And thank you. It's not a Twitch stream. <laughs> I will just say that. I was just like, don't get your hopes up. I know that there are some people here who want me to start streaming. It's not that. <laughs> Landon, were you having flashbacks to all my peer pressure and like, oh no, what if someone in chat said? <laughs> it was just like, I was like, Luter, I'm so sorry. It's not streaming. <laughs> I, I have failed you guys so far in convincing her to become a streamer. She says, no, Karen. I work I 40 hours a week and try. I have other hobbies too. No. Um, she's, I, this is still what she says. Where? Where? <laughs> where when okay so that's that's it for that um all right you guys so for y'all watching um the the vod version of this that we're that we're posted we're gonna say um we're gonna say goodbye thank you so much for watching um don't forget to like comment subscribe down below and of course as always don't forget to make it a great day and don't forget to be awesome bye y'all